Welcome back, kindergarten friends. Your friend Merlin and myself here. Now remember, Jack and Annie are on a mission. They are in what country? China. That is right. They are in China, Merlin. Why are they in China? Well, remember, they had to find something to wake Penny the Penguin up. Do you remember that? Yes. They need something very special. A special, what was it? Oh, a special food. You guys are right. It was a special food. Do you remember what the special food had to have? Merlin, can you remind us? It was healthy, grainy, and baked with love. Tough as wood, round, and the color of sand, and given to those who have lost their land. We thought maybe it could be bamboo, but it wasn't bamboo. And Jack and Annie can't go back to town, and they can't go to the animal reserve because they were stuck. Do you remember what happened? Remember our last chapter? It was the Drake, the dragon awakens. Did the dragon really wake up? No. What happened, Merlin? Why was the earth shaking? They were having an earthquake. That's right. And how were they going to get out of there? Do you remember how they were going to get out of there? Oh, that's right, you guys. The special potion that Jack drank. What happened to Jack? Oh, that's right, Merlin. He grew 25 feet tall. But did Annie get it? No. Where did they decide to go back to? Do you guys remember? Are they going to go to town to find this magic food? Or are they going to go back up and help the pandas? The pandas. That's right. And Jack said usually when they do the right thing and they go help someone out, they figure out the clue to their mystery. So let's read on today with Chapter 7, Merlin, called Jack the Giant. You guys ready? You're going to need your reader response journal. Today, as you are following along, I want you to color how Jack changes. So you're going to illustrate how Jack changes, and I want you to keep this one empty because I have a special job for you on this one when we're done reading. So how does Jack change? We know he grows big, but how else does he change? All right. Jack the Giant, Chapter 7. Jack felt as if someone was gripping his head and pulling him up and up and up. He looked down and watched his arms and hands stretch out. His legs grew longer, his feet bigger. Jack rocked back and forth, then stood still. He had stopped stretching and growing. His shoes, clothes, and backpack had all grown bigger to fit his new body. Jack! Annie's voice sounded distant. Peering throughout the dust, Jack looked around for Annie. Jack, down here! Jack looked down. Annie was standing next to him. She only came up to his knees. I dropped the bottle and broke it, she said. I didn't get to drink the potion. Oh, no, Jack boomed. Even his voice was bigger. I'm sorry. You're huge, said Annie. How does it feel? Is it fun? Take a look at how big Jack is. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Not yet, said Jack. The earth trembled again with another aftershock. Annie lost her balance and fell. Jack leaned over and picked her up with both hands. He placed her on one of his giant shoulders. Whoa, said Annie. This is cool. Now I'm taller than you. I can be your lookout. From there, new height, Jack and Annie could see over the rubble to the vast devastation. Do you guys know what devastation means? It means when something's ruined beyond repair. It means that like building, buildings have fallen down, that there's a lot of destruction, things have been broken. So they looked out at the vast devastation. Trees down in the valley had been uprooted. The river was wild and raging. The mountaintops were shrouded in dark clouds. It's starting to rain again, said Annie. That's the least of our problems, said Jack. I just hope the earthquake didn't destroy the panda center. I know, let's hurry. We only have an hour, said Annie. Annie held on to Jack's head, and Jack held on to Annie's legs. He lifted one giant foot and stepped over the boulder that had crushed their bikes. Picking his way through the rubble, he headed back to the panda center. He stepped over fallen debris, power lines, and deep cracks in the road. His enormous sneakers crushed twigs and brush. 
Jack stepped over huge mounds of mud as if they were ant hills. He kicked away boulders as if they were soccer balls. He tossed aside fallen trees as if they were broken branches. He leapt over a river of water, coursing down from the mountain as if it were a rain puddle. This is incredible, said Jack. Watch out, said Annie. A boulder was rolling down the wet road toward them. Jack spread his legs wide. The boulder went between them and kept rolling down the hill. Jack and Annie laughed. Now you're having fun, she said. Jack nodded. Maybe a little bit. Suddenly a tree crashed across the road. Jack stumbled over it. He fell to the ground just as a wall of mud came cascading, cascading down the mountain slope. The black ooze was filled with rocky fragments and plants. Annie, thought Jack. He lifted his head out of the mud before it smothered him. He reached around and felt Annie's feet kicking. He pulled her out of the thick, wet goo. You okay? Jack shouted. Yes! Annie sputtered. But we're sliding over the cliff. Annie was right. With the force of a tidal wave, the mudslide was pushing them across the highway toward the cliff. Jack clutched Annie under one of his huge arms. Then he struggled through the grimy ooze until they were clear of the mudslide. Covered with mud from his hair to his shoes, Jack felt heavy and uncomfortable. He even had mud in his mouth. He put Annie down and sat on the road. At least we're, we're safe, Annie said. Jack coughed, gagging on mud. You look like a giant swamp monster, Annie said. Jack couldn't talk. As the rain fell harder, he threw back his head and let rainwater wash his face and fill his mouth. He choked and spit and coughed until his throat was clear. With help from the pelting rain, he washed the mud off his bare arms and his shirt, his jeans, and his sneakers. Finally, he looked at Annie. How long do you think I've been a giant now? He asked hoarsely. I don't know, she said. It seems like a long time. We better get moving. We only have an hour, he said. What do we do if you're still a giant when we get to the center? Asked Annie. I'll hide outside, said Jack, until I'm small again. He figured the last thing... He the staff needed now was to see a 25 foot tall kid slowly they both stood up soaking wet but cleaner jack lifted annie back onto his shoulder he began striding uphill again sloshing through mud puddles and stepping over crushed rocks jack walked through falling rain never stopping but by the time they reached the panda center he was so tired he could barely take another step with Annie on his shoulder, Jack stood on the bank of the river, and they stared across at the damage wrought by the earthquake. The parking lot was filled with mud. The center sign had been knocked down. Portion of the bridge had, portions of the bridge had collapsed into the river and fallen. Brush and debris were piled up on the other side of the entrance gate. The slopes that surrounded the center were now gray and bare. Landslides had stripped them of foliage. If it's this bad outside the center, said Jack, I wonder how bad it is inside. How do we even get inside, said Annie, staring down at the raging river. Don't worry, said Jack. I'm pretty sure I'm tall enough to wade across. He took a deep breath, then stepped into the river. The cold water swirled around his waist. The current nearly knocked him over. Slowly and carefully, he stepped around a huge rock that had rolled into the river. Suddenly, Jack felt his body start to quake. Another aftershock, he thought. He paused, but his body kept shaking. As Jack shook, he started to grow smaller. In an instant, he had shrunk back to normal size. He and Annie plunged into the swiftly churning water. Jack grabbed the branch of a fallen tree. Clinging to the branch, he looked around frantically for Annie. She was holding on to a log. Here! shrieked Jack. He reached out his hand and Annie grabbed it. As the water swirled around them, he pulled her over to him. Can we get to the bridge? cried Annie. Try! yelled Jack. They both let go of the branch and thrashed through the water until they grabbed onto a piece of the wrecked bridge. Jack and Annie hoisted themselves onto the slab of concrete. Jack pointed to part of the bridge that still stood at the edge of the ravine. He took another deep breath and leapt over the gap onto the broken bridge. Annie followed. Jack and Annie clung to a piece of the bridge railing and stared at the entrance gate of the panda center. Muddy rocks, branches, and leaves were piled on the other side. I think we can climb over, said Annie. She led the way, stepping onto the railing next to the gate. 
Jack followed her. They climbed over the gate and kept climbing over the heap of branches, brush, and rocks that blocked the entrance. When they reached the top of the wreckage, they looked down. Staff members were rushing around with buckets, shovels, and first aid kits. When Mr. Lee and Dr. Ling caught sight of Jack and Annie, they both stopped dead in their tracks and gaped at them. Hi there, Annie called. Can we help? <laughs> Jack and Annie, I, oh my goodness. All right, in this bottom little box, what I want you to do is I want you to draw what you think happened to the Panda Center inside. And um, also what I want you to do is down below, um, this link is one about baby pandas in kindergarten. And I would love for you to also, if you don't want to do that, you can draw what baby pandas do in panda kindergarten with their nanny. It's pretty funny. They're a little naughty. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this. I can't wait to read chapter eight, one panda at a time tomorrow. Have a great day, kindergartners, and I will see you tomorrow for one panda at a time.